Welcome back to the bench, folks. Today's an exciting day in the Stumac studio because we have Cassandra Sotos in the house. She's visiting Athens, Ohio for the Ohio University Music Summit. And Cassandra was gracious enough to give us a little bit of time to talk about one of my favorite products, the Brown Box. The Brown Box is a voltage controller that amp nerds like me and a lot of other folks here at Stumac love to use. And I get to pick her brain about it. So I'm excited. Cassandra, welcome. Thank you, I'm very happy to be here. Tell us, for those who don't already know and already love this product, tell us what this box does. So at AmpRx, we create products that help musicians power their gear with the correct voltage. Mm -hmm. The brown box goes between the wall and your gear. Mm -hmm. You plug it into the wall, it tells you what the voltage is coming out of the wall, which is oftentimes not what you think it's gonna be. And then you power your gear with the brown box after you've adjusted it to the correct voltage for that gear. Yeah, so the standard voltage you see coming out of the wall in the United States is about 120 volts, but it could actually be a lot lower or a lot higher. And modern amps are built to run around 120 volts. That's no problem, but vintage tube amps, those were built to be run around 110 to maybe 118 volts. And so that's actually how the brown box was born. The original inventor of the brown box was playing a vintage amp and he had all the right gear. He had the amp, the guitar, the pedals, and it just wasn't quite right. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? He reverse engineered the problem to understand that the amp needed 110 volts because that's what it was designed for. And if they're not powered with that voltage, it changes things across the entire circuit, which makes you feel and sound different. The very first place that the electricity stops when it enters your amp is the power transformer and it multiplies it by it's three. Gonna multiply that. So it's not, you're not just talking about like a two, three volt difference. Cause you can say, oh, 122 versus 118. How big of a deal could that possibly be? Well, multiply it times three and then push it through an entire circuit exactly. and you have a bigger problem. Anything with a tube in the circuit will benefit from knowing what the voltage is. Also keeping the voltage correct is gonna help you preserve your tube life. Absolutely, that's another huge thing. Yeah, right, and good tubes aren't cheap and they're getting harder and harder to come by. So, you know, if I put a good set of tubes in my amp, I want them to last as long as possible. We have customers telling us all the time, I was retubing my amps every couple of months. It was such a pain. I almost went digital because it was such a pain, expensive and a headache, just like not knowing what you're gonna get. And then they're like, I got a brown box and I haven't had to retube my amp since. Underpowering your circuit is not good for it either. Yeah. Famously, Eddie Van Halen powered his amps with 80, 90 volts. That's where we got the brown sound. But Mr. Van Halen had unlimited access to tubes. He had unlimited access to tech. It's not good to underpower circuits mm -hmm. that much. You'll feel a difference. It'll start to feel and sound sterile. And that's why the brown box has a lower limit. So all of our products were designed to give you a safe range of reduction, mm -hmm. specifically for musical tube gear. Well, and Eddie Van Halen used a Variac, right? A, yep. a variable transformer, which I think a lot of people that I've talked to are like, well, why, why wouldn't I just use a, a Variac? They're inexpensive, they're easy to find. And I don't think a Variac is necessarily a great solution for most people. They're not designed for a musical setting. Right. So it has a big knob on the top, mm -hmm. It has a swiper on it. Right. If you bump into it, you can yeah. really easily change the voltage on the variac. It's a much wider range. Down to zero, up to 222.40. Right. You don't want to bump into that, right? <laughs> Definitely not. And in like a live setting, things like that happen. Not to mention that it's heavy. It's very, very heavy. It's <laughs> not meant to be on the road. These switches, they click. They had a they're nice sturdy. click. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't knock this out of place. And the range isn't gonna go beyond what your amp can handle. No, not at all. Yeah. Whatever you're getting out of the wall on the brown box is the most that you're gonna get. Now on the brownie, you can increase the voltage. Yeah. It was designed so that in most situations, you can reach 117 to 120. Mm -hmm. Now there are outlier situations, right? So if it's like 130 volts, it happens, but it's mm -hmm. not that common. Right. You'll be able to reduce it by seven volts, or if it's lower than you want, you can increase it by three or five volts. Okay. That covers most situations. And if you're in an extreme situation, you'll be at least better off than you were when you started. I'd like to just plug them in and have you show us how they work, is that all right? I would love to do that. And we will find out what the wall voltage here at Stumac is. Do you know what it is? I don't know what it is here. You have any predictions? I bet it's high. There's a lot going on in here. There's a lot, a lot going light, on. A lot of lights, a lot of gear. <laughs> I'm interested to see uh, see what we find out. It's 
start with the brown box. Whew. The 26. 125, 125 126. 126. Uh-huh. And then you've got amperage. Yes. Measured below. So voltage, amperage, so you know how much current draw you're getting from your amp allows you to understand if something might be going wrong. Step one, you know what's coming out of the wall, right? right? Mm -hmm. And if you're powering your amp with a brown box for the first time, uh, sometimes on the back of the amp, there will be a sticker mm -hmm. or a plate yeah. that says what the input voltage is supposed to be. If not, if it's a vintage amp, you probably want to start around 110 to 114 and then power your amp with it and then see how it feels around there. Okay. If it's a modern amp, you are probably good to get it at least to 120 and then start experimenting with it. So right now the brown box is on bypass. We're getting 125 volts out of the wall. I would lower the voltage before you plug in your gear just because it's so high. Yeah. Like why expose your gear to that higher voltage? You could take it the whole way down and then experiment from there plug in your amp, see how it feels the different voltages, but really pay attention to the response that you're getting. Explain to us then what the two different knobs are for. The bottom knob, the bigger knob, has the bypass switch on it. So if the brown box is on bypass, no matter where this is, it's the whole thing is gonna be bypassed and you'll be getting the wall voltage. Basically, you make bigger steps with this and you make fine tuning steps with this one. If you want this locking kind of switch, as, as opposed to the swiper, you have to take big steps to get from 128 to 108. And that means that you can't necessarily always go down volt by volt. So that's the sacrifice that you make with that bigger range. So the Brownie, our newest product, working with a smaller range, we were able to design it so that you could reduce it volt by volt. That allows you to get 120, exactly. These screens are calibrated by us in our shop. Mm -hmm. You don't need a multimeter with it. I think that's also great. And another thing to note, because you do hear a lot of like, well, why wouldn't I just use a variac? And we touched on that a little bit, but a, a variac or a variable transformer is only part of the equation, right? It's a, a variac alone isn't going to do this. A variac isn't going to tell you what wall voltage you have. You're, you're still going to need a voltmeter or multimeter to, to tell you that. And, and then a variac, even with the adjustment on a variac is only as accurate as the voltage going into it. Exactly. So if you don't know what's going in to the variac, you may not be trimming it or boosting it to what you think unless you're also checking it with another meter. So, you know, this makes a lot of sense. So then obviously the, the plus signs are your, are your boost. Yeah. We have 126. Mm -hmm. We can get it up to 129 and then 131. If your input voltage was 110 or 112, yeah. you'd be able to get up to that 117 range and it would make quite a difference in your modern gear. So yeah, so this is catered more to modern gear. So if you live somewhere where your wall voltage is a true 110 and you have a more modern amp that's that's meant to power at 120, you're going to want you're going to want this to boost. And on the other side of that, if you play strictly vintage amps mm -hmm. and you live in a place with higher wall voltage or even around 120, you're going to want a brown box. You guys build these all yourselves by hand in Nashville, Tennessee, is that right? Yes, all of our products are hand-wired by humans mm -hmm. in Music City. Especially with the success of the Brownie, we're, we're so excited about branching out our product line to include more different types of voltage controlling. We talk to all of our customers. We're talking to artists all the time. Every day I'm finding out and understanding more and more of, of what people want and need yeah. in their rig. Can you talk about some of the folks who use these? I would say that our products are a best kept secret of the pro touring world. Okay. A lot of touring bands and techs have been hip to brown box for a long time. <laughs> So like the Red Hot Chili Peppers use brown box products. Chris Stapleton uses brown box. Um, Gene Embody uses a brown box. <laughs> so actually some of our greatest endorsements have been from Amp Builders too. Yeah. So Dr. Z is a big fan of the brown box. That's right, yeah. Eli Lester from Two Rock is a big fan, fan mm -hmm. of the brown box. It's great. I imagine it's probably invaluable in, in a studio setting as well to really dial in the sweet spot. Oh yeah. Amp. Dave Cobb is also in the studio using brown box gear all the time. Um, you mentioned studios. People use our rack mounts for outboard gear. Right. We have a lot of studios in Nashville that use them. RCA Studio, uh, Dave Cobb. A lot of studio musicians in Nashville yeah, take them right. with them everywhere they go. Well, let's try this out. So normally what I would do is reduce the voltage on the brown box down to that 110, 112 range, knowing this, that this is vintage. But for the sake of the experiment, so you can feel the difference from the beginning 
to when it's the correct voltage. Are you okay with yeah. us powering it as if we're powering it from the wall? Yeah, sure. This amp has been abused its whole life. Here we go. So this is just straight wall voltage? This is as if you just plugged it right into the wall. That's what I'm used to it sounding like. Okay. 120. I don't know if, if it comes through you know, if you can hear it, it definitely responds differently. It's, it feels uh, different? It does. Okay, let's take it down some more. 115. 115. So you think this amp was probably made for 110s? Yeah, 110, okay. 112. Okay. It's smoother. I mean, it's not like night and day difference in the actual tone, but it's it, re it definitely is responding. It feels different to you. Yeah. So that this 110. is one ten. I don't know that people who aren't used to the rig they're listening to would notice a major difference in sound. I can tell the difference in the way it responds. I don't, to me, it's it's worth it just to preserve the life of these old amps that I that I love. And uh, I want to, you know, make sure I get the most out of the tubes I put in them and, you know, and preserve the original components as, as much as possible. I, I think it's worth it. I think that it's worth noting that it's not about creating a specific tone. It's about getting the tone that you like every time yeah consistency right mm -hmm. so you know i feel like what i got from you is that it felt different at different voltages mm -hmm. and eventually you might gain some preference sure. over one of those voltages or use them for different things yeah like the brown box is not for copying somebody else's tone it's about making sure that you feel the way you want to feel when you're playing and your gear is protected well cassandra you've sold me i mean that's no secret, I was already sold before you got here. I love my tube amps. I know a lot of folks like their modeling amps and their line sixes and all the digital stuff. It's not really my thing. Um, so for me, a lover of old tube amps, I, I think these are indispensable tools. A lot of people love their tube amps and nothing will really replace the feeling that you get when you play through a tube circuit that you love. But if we use tools like the Brown Box of Brownie to monitor and maintain that gear, mm -hmm. it can really improve the experience sure. and make it a lot more enjoyable for you to play. And if you're a tube amp lover, that's what it's about, right? Yeah, I've noticed a lot more consistency, a lot longer life out of tubes. It's just a wonderful product. And I thank you so much for thank spending you. the time, uh, coming by and talking to us about it, showing them off to us. And folks, thank you for joining us at the bench. We'll see you next time.